When it comes to calculating area for circles, there are a couple of formulas around, and in this video, I'll explain and highlight, highlight some of them, and especially I'm going to explain that in some formulas, the number 0 0.7854 is featured. For example, if you get a handy reference book like this, depending on the manufacture or uh, printing uh, company, you might get for areas of the circles and a couple of formulas. Here is pi r square that you might be familiar with from middle school. And there's another one featuring this number. Now notice right away that the decimal dot is either on the wrong spot or that number or, or that zero is a typo there because the number is 0 0.7854 in this formula. Okay, so watch out for some of these typos. And I'm going to explain just what the heck is that number. And a couple of ways to calculate area of circles. Piping trades will use usually that number. Uh, from middle school or high school math, you might be remembering this formula that was in the book that the area is using the radius, the radius of a circle. Oops, where is my eraser? There. The radius of the circle is that length extending from the middle of the circle to the circumference of the circle, so that's radius. You have to square the radius and you have to multiply it by multiply it by pi. So that's bad. There. That's a little better. Or the other formula that was in the book uses actually that number. I'm gonna use that formula to arrive to that number in the next one minute. So like I said, piping trades use a diameter and this number because pipes don't have radii, I guess. It's easier to measure diameter accurately on a pipe. Now you might say, what's the big deal? You can divide it into two because a diameter is twice as long as any radius. Yes, it works fine with decimal numbers, but if your uh, outside, di outside diameter on a pipe is uh, uh, 10 inches and 3 16 of an inch, now you have to halve it, and after halving it to get the radius, what's half of 10 and 3 16 anyhow? You, now you need to square it. Good luck with that. So that's why uh, on a calculator where you don't have a square button and you don't have a pi button, you can work with this number. So let me just explain where that number comes from. To use this formula, this r square means that you take the area, sorry, that you calculate the area by taking the radius, you times the radius by itself, and then you times it by pi. So far so good. So that's the standard high school format or middle school format. And let me just scroll down. We'll get back to that number in a sec. I'm going to do a little magic here. This equation is very fine. You can see three things multiplied in it. <clears throat> Why don't we just quadruple everything? To do that, I would need to do and I'll put a number 4 there and uh, put a radius uh, there just changing color radius times radius and then times pi there's a there's going to be an order to this madness why did we just quadruple everything well we're not done yet if we quadruple the radius, then that also means to keep the same area, to keep the area the same, that would mean that you would need to divide pi by 4, you know. You give a little, you take a little. That's how things work in life. That's the only way you can keep that number of the same, okay? Now, instead of that number 4, I'm going to go, I'm going to split it in half and, uh, divide it or uh, share it equally between those two radii there and I'm gonna go two here and two there two radius times two radius 
times pi which is now divided by 4 because we are quadrupling that so we need to uh, quarter that. Let me just extend the page a little bit. 2 radius is, do notice from this picture, is none other than the diameter itself because our diameter is twice as long as the radius. So instead of 2 radius I'm going to write diameter in the next formula. Diameter times diameter times pi divided by 4. So this is all the same stuff, you know. I just increased the radius a little bit and I'm just uh, making pi a little, a little less than what it was. Now, diameter times diameter can also be written as diameter squared, right? Because when you have two things to multiply by itself, it's, uh, it can be written as just simple squaring. So I'm going to write area equals diameter squared times pi divided by 4. Okay, and I said we arrived to the same formula as I showed, as I have shown you in this book a few seconds ago, except that uh, you don't have the decimal number anywhere in sight that I said would be coming up. Well, it's there. Come to the calculator here. There, you can see the screen here. Excellent. So I'm just going to enter second function pi because that's how this one works. Pi divided by 4 equals 0 0.78539. Now, because it's 539, you can round that one up to 54. 7854. That's the number. That's the number that was featured. Well, not only in this book, but in a lot of other books. Hopefully with uh, no typos in them. And that's the number that works with the square of the diameter. And so that's where it comes from. Again, that's the correct number. And pi divided by 4 is going to get you this number. You can just memorize it. It's fairly accurate, but there is more digits to it, you can see. The calculator has like 10 digits of it, but there's another 10 in the internal memory of the calculator, so I do recommend that you use a calculator with a pi function in it. In, but uh, if you want to just memorize those four digits, just memorize them. Make sure you memorize them correctly with that decimal dot issue. And <coughs> both of these formulas work perfectly fine either r square pi or diameter square uh, div uh, diameter square multiplied by a quarter of pi. There's a couple of variations on this formula. It can also be written as diameter square divided by 4 and then multiplied by pi. It's the same thing. As long as 4 is a divisor in both of them and then you multiply the two other things, you should be getting to exactly, arriving to exactly the same area. So either which way it's formatted, oh what the heck, here's the third version, that area equals 1 over 4 multiplied by diameter squared multiplied by pi. It's all three versions are the same area equals there. So whichever way it's formatted in your book, it's going to get you the same answer.